Hello everybody, it's Tommy and welcome back to another speed build. Today we're going to be building a pirate oasis. So this is basically a dual lot. No, we don't have dual lot types in The Sims, but I wanted to do a house or a tavern that was very pirate themed. Obviously, Sulani is a really, really great place to put it kind of keeping it a little bit smaller, but this is more so than anything inspired by another game that I've been playing in my spare time. I know I've never talked about this on this channel, and obviously not that I really need to say this, but this isn't sponsored in any way. I just wanted to share a little bit of like a different game that I play outside of The Sims. So I play Sea of Thieves, and it literally ruins my life. And I mean that in the nicest way possible, but it has completely messed up my sleep schedule, ruined my social life, like taken over my life. And it's so funny because I've tried it. Like I tried it probably about a year ago and I couldn't get into it. I was like, oh, this is a great concept, but not the best game. It like wasn't fully fleshed out at that point. It was kind of boring, if anything. And I can also see where people would see it now and be like, oh, it's kind of boring. But I'm obsessed with it. My boyfriend is obsessed with it. My brother is obsessed with it. And all we do is every night want to play Sea of Thieves. So basically, if you've never played before, it's a pirate game. And it is the total goal is to just go around and get treasure all the time. And you can either earn treasure your own way, or you can steal treasure from other people that are on the server at all times of the day, live actual people. And then you want to take that treasure to these different organizations and you'll earn experience from them. And the reason you would want to do that is because everybody's goal is basically to either be super rich or reach pirate legend, which requires you to be level 50 with three of those organizations that I just mentioned or just be super rich. Like people love to do either. I want both. I want to be rich and be pirate legend. I don't think that's too much to ask. So you basically end up having to do a bunch of tasks to get a bunch of gold or you end up sailing all over the place trying to steal stuff from people. There's a bunch of different kinds of things that you can do. There's ghost ships. There are forts. There is like all sorts of stuff. Everything that you could imagine to go hand in hand with a pirate. It's probably available somewhere in the game and they update it monthly, which is amazing to me because to just take, for example, like The Sims, The Sims doesn't really see a monthly update that adds like significant change to the game. Like every single time they update in the monthly update, they add something new to do. And it's totally, it's the best thing that I've ever experienced. And they're super, super great with their community. They're constantly keeping up with the news and trying to find out new stuff to do. They have have like this whole insiders program. They have stuff that you can earn through like Twitch drops and stuff. They're really great about partnering with streamers and YouTubers and just making everybody a really happy, fun community. And I've already met people through the game, which the Sims can be, it's tougher to meet people through the Sims. You can meet them in the community pretty easily. Like the Twitter community is popping. So if you are looking for friends, that is where you should go. But if you're going to just like sit down and play the Sims every day, you're not going to run into other people. You're by yourself. So it's a totally different concept and it's so fun. It really, it, it's what has taken over my current life. So I realized that I had never really built anything that was pirate related in The Sims. And I had this idea. This is also kind of inspired by doing, looking through Pinterest and finding some different artwork of doing like a cool skull rock, a lot of greenery, and then doing a house and a tavern right next to each other. So this is supposed to be kind of like a retired pirate who's opened up their own tavern for other pirates to come and hang out after they're done sailing the seas, whatever you want it to be. Obviously, we don't really have the capabilities in the game to run both at the same time. So it's totally going to be your choice if you want to live here as a residential or if you want this to be your business. Something that I have heard people mention is that you can like pick for it to be a business and then just never leave if there is nothing like you have everything here in order for you to be able to live. So the house on the right is the actual residential home and then the house on the left is going to be our tavern and it is very small. It doesn't look small from the outside of this but this was more about decoration than anything else and it took up a lot of the lot especially trying to do the dual heights one being on the diagonal it just took up so much more room 
and for some reason had a lot of problems. Like I had a ton of building issues when doing this. I'll explain a little bit more when we go inside, but there were some things that happened that made it so I had to furnish it in a very, very particular way. Another big key thing in order to make this look super, I would say like piratey, is to use a lot of the hidden catalog, the debug category and the show hidden objects category or catalog. Uh, in the game. So basically island living, cats and dogs, and then a little bit of jungle adventure. They all have so many cool pieces that they use to build the world, including some really fun like buoys, some barrels, a lot of stacked like boxes, anything that I felt like could look like it was either on a ship previously or some type of washed up treasure or washed up items. Or just in general, when you're playing Sea of Thieves, obviously you go back to these like sea posts or outposts and they have buildings there where you'll go in, you can buy stuff, you can buy clothes and you can buy weapons and stuff. And then there's one that's an actual tavern and it serves a lot of different purposes, but you can go in there and like get a drink and stuff. So I was looking a little bit at the interior and exterior of those and trying to see how did they do their worlds? Like what was the set design? What do they think like a pirate world would look like and it's very cluttered as you could imagine I don't foresee too many pirates being very worried about everything being super nice and neat all the time I am when I'm on my ship I try to make sure everything is so organized to a fault where I get distracted by it sometimes because everything has to be like in its particular spot it's a lot to explain but I'm a little bit particular about that in real life so it's not a surprise I basically like for example they give you three barrels on the bottom of the boat and they serve as cannonball barrels so you're able to just put cannonballs in there however there are many types of cannonballs in the game and my teammates will often just throw all the cannonballs in all the different barrels and they're all over the place and they're so messy and I have to go down there and move all of them around so that you've got your fire bombs in one, your regular barrels in another, cannonballs in another, your um, skeleton ones in a different one. Like I'm very particular like that. So I am a different type of pirate. However, uh, typically you'll probably not get too many that are worried about keeping everything not super cluttered. So I wanted this to feel very cluttered, a little messy, a little mismatchy, kind of dirty. There were some items that were in the hidden catalog that were like I, I imagine this is actually from Sulani. Like, there's probably something you can do with this. I think that game pack added the ability to be like a conservationist or something like that. And you can basically go around and clean beaches. I've never tried it out, so I'm not like 100% sure how this works. And then over time, it will become like nicer and nicer. But you can actually find like the dirt piles of washed up buoys and fishing rope and fishing nets in like bundles on the ground. And they look very washed up and just like waterlogged and everything everything. So found some of those, kind of put those every which way, make it very, very cluttered. Lots of stuff that you would find from the C2. We've got a little bit of like driftwood. One of the things I wanted so desperately to find was like sea glass. I was looking everywhere for sea glass and I couldn't find anything in the catalog, which is a little bit interesting to me because Cats and Dogs is based after like East Coast, particularly like Maine, New England area, maybe a little bit of like New Hampshire coast and I'm actually from there so one of the big things around here is not from there I I live in Maine um one of the big things here is sea glass and there's whole websites you can go on where you can look for sea glass you can people will mark what colors you can find on certain beaches what they found there what types you can expect like what times of the day the tide is coming in and out and what times would be like the best to expect certain ones. And another thing I used to do uh, before YouTube and a while ago is be a camp counselor. And one of the things we used to love to do was take the kids around here to go find sea glass. So that pack being added and not having like any clutter objects or any hidden objects that have anything to do with sea glass was a little bit interesting to me. And then I thought about it a little more and I was like, oh, Sea of Thieves actually doesn't have any 
anything like that either. And I could totally see them adding like glass bottles of sea glass that you can find and trade in. And they would be like maybe a rare item. And obviously there's different items in the game where like you have to make sure that they come back in a certain condition. Like you can't just throw it all over the place and toss it in the water. It'll get messed up and then it loses value. So it would be like one of those items. But I don't know. I'm always having ideas for that game just as much as I'm always having ideas for The Sims and saying, you know, they should add this and they should add that. And Apex is another really big one with me. I play Apex almost every day as well. And I'm constantly like, oh my God, they should add this. Why don't they do this? So it goes and works the whole way around for all of the different games. I, I actually feel a little bit more strongly when it comes to Sea of Thieves and Apex about like adding stuff because I think part of me has just come to the point with The Sims where one, I know that they're going to add packs at some point. So I know there will be new content always. So part of me is always a little bit patient, just kind of waiting for when they do so. And the other part of me has come to expect to a certain degree that most of the stuff that gets added to this game is not really going to be up my alley. And I mean that super, super sincerely, but I don't think that in a while, in a while have they added something or announced a pack and me be like wow this is exciting like this is something that I desperately want and it's probably because the things that I want for the game are not what most people want for the game and I understand that so I'm just kind of living in it at this point I don't really care too much I'm always excited for new content as just like a general concept I love being able to do different things on my channel and thinking of new ideas and things that I can build and work on and things that you guys are going to recommend that I try out. However, as far as like a pack goes and very specifically like a pack that makes me feel like I really want to get into the game and play, 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 it hasn't come in a long time. I can't even like if I'm sitting here thinking right now, what's my favorite pack in the game? I, I, none of them stand out to me as like a favorite. You know what I really want? And this is a little bit of Sims news that I thought about making a video on, but I'm not feeling like it's going to be enough of a topic to actually do a full video. We are probably getting the next expansion pack very soon. Uh, the Sims community, which is basically like a blogging and information website, and I believe they also have a YouTube channel, had an article about expansion pack number nine being pretty much completed. Uh, a couple of final steps. I think it was like in the final phases of production, which means obviously we're going to be getting one soon. I imagine we're actually going to get something else before it. I think that we will probably get a game pack before that. I'm not sure though. I'm not like queen of Sims. I don't know all. I just have a feeling that that's what's going to happen. And everybody's kind of trying to figure out what it would be. If I was going to pick something like what I wish it would be more than anything. I want amusement parks so bad. I want amusement parks so bad and I want them to be super detailed. I want to be able to do everything in them and like make my own stuff and not and have everything like I don't want it to just be a vacation world you can go and visit and everything's already set to go and it's like a community lot that you can't alter. I want every object to be its own and me to be able to customize them a little bit, like maybe make the roller coaster different directions and shapes. I know that gets a little bit too much into roller coaster games and ro planet coaster and all that. And it's probably too much to ask or expect, but it's what I want. I'm not going to lie and say that it's not what I want. That would be like, whoa, I'd be excited because you guys know I'm such a Disney fan, such a Disney fan. So I would love to be able to do like a Disney World. And with that, I would love for them to collab with Disney. Like if they were going to do a branded pack with another company, because they've already done Moschino stuff. And I don't know if all of you know this, so I'll just let you know that on Twitter, Twitter, Sim Guru Frost, I believe it was, who is currently the community manager for The Sims, had posted a little bit of a questionnaire asking people what they thought about The Sims and like different things, different topics, voting on what you thought about like uh, skiing and like all of those. How do you feel about like different topics? And a lot of them were winter based, which made me feel like it's pretty apparent that they're thinking about doing some kind of a winter pack, which makes me excited because it's going to work out super well for my Disney save we'll do a whole frozen world, we'll do the whole bit. But one of the other things that they had mentioned, it was like a fill in the blank question. And it basically said, if we could work with another company, who would you want us to work with? And the big answer was Ikea. Everybody wants an Ikea stuff pack or an Ikea pack, which I agree totally. But Disney, Disney, come on, please. And I know they already have ties with Disney in some loose way, 
even if it's through LucasArts and Star Wars and the EA Battlefront, all of that collaboration, obviously I don't know the details behind the contract, but the doors are open at least a little bit. So please, please, that would be like, oh my God, I would be over the moon for a Disney themed pack with just like ball gowns and crowns and oh my god like prince uniforms and some magical beautiful build items and castle pieces and giant doors and extra stone textures and fountains and beautiful gardens oh my god does that not just sound amazing can you imagine what I could do with that kind of stuff you guys that would be like my wow moment um I should probably get back to the build a little bit here and explain what's going on with this hallway. I do apologize for getting a little bit off topic. So basically me building this house on this diagonal, I had a really weird glitch and I have had this happen before, but I think I was able to get rid of it in most instances and this one I was not. So I basically like made this shape and then I decided it needs to be a little bit bigger. We need a little bit more room here. So I added one more out to the left and that for some reason wouldn't let me delete the wall. It acted as if the wall wasn't even there. So the only solution was to put some archways there so that you could open it up. And then I wasn't even really sure what I was going to be able to fit in there. Like I was looking at it. What do I put in there? And originally I thought maybe the kitchen, but it's a very cramped kitchen. It leaves like one tile for Sims to be able to move around in there. And I just didn't know what to do. I was like, do I have to start over the entire lot? What should I be doing here? But then I kind of took it as a little bit of a build challenge. Like you get a shell and you're not allowed to change any of the walls on the inside. So figure it out. And I started decorating the kitchen and the living room in this main portion. And I realized pretty quickly that I didn't have anywhere for the bedroom to go. So the bedroom was either going to have to go in the other building and I was going to have to scrap my idea of doing the tavern at all. Or somehow I had to make this little tiny closeted hallway work as a bedroom. So I decided to tuck one bed over into the front corner there and it does serve as like the all-purpose bedroom. You've got the one curtain that comes over the archway so you can close it off if you want to but it's just supposed to be like a single pirate home so I figured why not. It's kind of a little bit of an open area. It's open anyway because you've got those beautiful sliding windows in the front and in the back totally exposed to the elements. Um, didn't want to put curtains up. I love it. I love having like the exposure and the wind and all of that. I can imagine how beautiful that would be. So personal preference, just leaving it alone. But that makes it a little bit of a small area. Not to say that they would be spending too much time in their bedroom anyway. I imagine they would be over running the tavern and then wobble back over and crash in their house for the night and then do it all over again. So to me, it made more sense to have the living room, the kitchen be a little bit of a bigger area. And if worst comes to worse, you could always remove a chair and put a couch in and let people from the tavern come over and sleep on your couch. If you're that type of tavern, if you want to have like the full experience of being able to house people as well. I was thinking of it more as like a pub and bar. Like you come for a little while, have a drink and then wobble out the door. That's more of like what was up my alley. So instead we've got a kind of a small kitchen, but fully functional one. And then some of the chairs and stuff that come with base game. A lot of that stuff looks a little bit more rustic, kind of up the alley for what I'm going. Those like deep browns, some very old school looking furniture, lots of base game in here. I was actually really surprised because I haven't, I guess, really done a dedicated pirate build before. So doing it this time around, it definitely, I may me realize again that a lot of the base game stuff just looks so old so it does really work for stuff like this I'm glad we have them in game but it makes me wonder so much what it was like to build in this game when it was only base game because I I've done base game builds and I've only ever done one that I'm like super happy with I am going to do one for the Disney save a lot of you have requested that I am going to do it but it's not my favorite thing to do a lot of the furniture is just so so far uh, away from my personal taste and then lastly, we do have the tavern here. So you guys are going to be seeing me design this tavern with a bathroom on the inside. So I actually hate, I hate adding bathrooms to this shape of room. It cuts the room up in such a weird way and it really closed off the tavern. It made it look kind of awful. It just wasn't what I wanted. It didn't look right. So I actually, after the video, removed this bathroom and pushed all of the chairs and tables that you're going to be seeing me place around so that we have a little bit more room in here for people to come in and get a drink and the bar is totally workable. So instead, the bathroom is replaced by the Island Living Outdoor Bathroom, which is a debug item and it's going to be 
be in the corner kind of underneath the tavern here. So your Sims will have to go outside and go in there to use the bathroom. It shouldn't be too big of an issue, but it was just taking up so much room in here. I felt like that was a really easy solution. And to be honest, I'm not worried about putting a bathroom in the other house because in my head, pirates are kind of dirty. So I felt like taking baths in the ocean water was like probably the go-to and you do have the one sink in the main house if you want to wash hands and freshen up a little bit and I feel like that is really realistic to what would actually happen so you can go you'd have to leave your house to go use the bathroom it's kind of like an outhouse but then you can also just like take a shower in uh, the public area or anywhere in the ocean I think you can do that if you can't honestly I'm not worried about it this is like the one instance where I'm like unconcerned about the bathroom other than being able to use the toilet because it's like a necessity because it's super realistic like pirates just don't take showers I don't feel like they don't care and they're in the water and the ocean all the time anyway which uh is not the cleanest thing but I don't think they are too worried about it so that is basically going to be the end of the build today. A couple of screenshots at the end. Let me know what you thought of this and would you like to see more pirate themed builds? Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that little bell icon below to turn on post notifications so you can get updated every single time I post and I will talk to you all in the next one.